Today we are going to continue with uh, calculus, obviously, and we are interpreting graphs. And here we are given, <coughs> sorry, we are given a cubic function. The cubic function is fx. And what we can see on this cubic function is that its equation is also given. And I think this is the first one where you have an equation with fractions in. Okay. And what we are going to do today is we're going to find the coordinates of B and C. We're going to find the length of OD, the length of PC, the length of AC. This is like the normal question you would get in functions. Cool. Then um, the gradient of the curve at A, that's what we're going to find. And the coordinates of the points where 2y plus 3x equals to k touches the graph and for which values of x is the graph increasing. So this is a normal exam type question, okay? and that's the reason for us doing it. So the first question is, find the coordinates of B and C. Now on the graph, you can see that B and C are turning points. And that's all that we do in the first part. Okay, so let us run through this. At the turning points, so at these coordinates, the gradient is equal to zero. And if I take the first derivative, I take it per term. So I differentiate every term. So negative 3x cubed will give me negative 3, oh, not negative 3, negative x cubed over 4 to give me negative 3x squared over 4. Notice that it's staying over 4. In the second term, if I differentiate it, now it becomes over 4 because I have 2 times 15, which is 30, divided by 8. And that stays 15 over 4 if I simplify the fraction. And then I have negative 3, and the 2 doesn't have an exponent. So the only tricky part here is this part, where I already manipulated the fraction of negative 30 over 8x, and I made that negative 15 over 4x, all right? Now, you do not have to worry about the fraction. If you multiply everywhere by the denominator, and I multiply everywhere by negative 4, then I get rid of the fraction completely. So if I multiply the first term by negative 4, the negatives will become positive and the 4s will cancel out. And in the second term, if I multiply with negative 4, the negatives will become positive and the 4s will cancel out. And then lastly, negative 3 times negative 4 will become plus 12. Right? Next, I can see that I have a common factor of 3. So I take out 3 everywhere. So you guys can see that um, all of the skills that you learned up until now is quite important. And you can either factorize or use the quadratic formula. This is simple enough to factorize. And I have two values of x. So I have x equals to negative 4 and x equals to negative 1. So on the graph, the value on the left would be negative 4, and there x would be negative 1, right? We can already see that the y value of b would be 0, and then there's some sort of y value for c that we still need to get. And here's the second part that you need to be mindful of. When you substitute negative 4 in, you don't substitute it into the gradient formula. You substitute it into the original function to, give, to get the y value. Remember, the function is the y value. Um, earlier grades, you learned that y is equals to fx. For the y value of x equals to negative 1, I substitute it into the original equation. And you can use a calculator for this. You don't have to show the substitution. You just do it. Right? Then I have two values, so b would be negative 4 and 0, and c would be negative 1 and 3 and 3 eighths. So what I suggest you do is fill it in on the graph as you go. It does help later on. 
So the second question is find the length of OD. So if I look on the graph, I have the x-axis. O is the origin, so it's 0, 0. And I just need to find D. At D, we know that's already the y-intercept, so x is 0. So in the equation, I substitute x of 0. So the value for y would be 2. And you just show it like this. Um, you can either show it like that, or you can say f0 is equal to 2. You don't have to do all of that. And therefore, OD would be 2 units, because the distance is 2 units. Now the next question says, find the distance of PC. So that is P. You can see I wrote over the P, the fraction part. So PC would be this distance here. You don't have to calculate anything, because at P, you already know that x is equal to 0. All right? And the y value would be the same as the y value for C, but you also don't need that because it's horizontal. You just need that distance. And the distance between 0 and negative 1 is 1 unit. So you just write down 1 unit. <clears throat> the next one is where it gets a little bit tricky. So finding the distance of AC. So AC is this whole part here, right? And what we know about the coordinate of A is we don't have the X value, but we do have the Y value. Because this line is horizontal, all of the Y values would be the same, which is 3 and 3 eighths, which we found in the first question. Okay, so in order to find x, and I already have the y value, I need to substitute that y value in the place of fx, and then solve x, and I'm going to use the remainder and factor theorem. So, y I need to replace with 3 and 3 eighths, and that translates to 27 over 8. All right. And notice this is equal to the original equation. This is fx, not the first derivative. The first derivative is only used for gradient. Okay? Now, I'm multiplied everywhere by 8. So if I multiply by 8, that becomes negative 2x cubed. And then multiply by 8, multiply by 8, 8, 8. So I got rid of the fraction. You could have also multiplied by negative 8, because in the next line, um, I multiplied by negative 1 to change the negatives to positives. The only reason why I want to do that is because I don't want a negative cube. I want to work with a positive number here. Okay? Then you test different values of x. Okay, to make it equal to zero. So if I put in negative one, this will become zero. But remember, if x is equal to negative one, then the factor is x plus one. And that's a common mistake people make. So if they substitute negative one, they make this bracket um, x minus one, and that's incorrect because I replaced x with negative 1, and what we spoke about earlier is that you bring that 1 over, and that's how you form the first bracket. Okay? <clears throat> then um, I took a little bit of a shortcut here to find bx. Um, so I say x times 2x squared will give me 2x cubed. 1 times 11 will give me that 11. Notice I brought the 27 over. Right? Then I use the normal, B, uh, normal method to find Bx, which we already discussed in the previous videos. And this now can be factorized. Um, my, my sense is that the majority of you guys are not comfortable factorizing these awkward numbers. But it's actually quite simple because this is a prime number. So I know because that's a prime number, 
that one of the values would be one and the other one would be 11. Then I just need to figure out where the two goes. Does it go to this bracket or that? And I do that by testing for the middle term. So 11x plus 2x will give me 13x in the middle. Right? Now you would see that a value is repeated. And that is okay because the value that's repeated is this actual turning point, that negative 1. You can see x would be equal to negative 1, and then the other value would be negative 11 over 2, or negative 5 and a half. So that negative 1, we already know, right? And that's also the other way of testing. Instead of just testing x equals to negative 1, if you look on the graph, you already have a value on that line. So you would have known that you can actually just use x negative 1, and make that plus one. I hope that makes sense. So for the a value then, it's this bracket, 2x plus 11, which you solve, and then the x value here is negative five and a half. Okay? But notice the question said the distance between a, c, and the distance between a, c is four and a half units. Right, it's not a negative value and it's not five and a half, it's four and a half units. And that's where people normally lose marks, they forget to answer the actual question. They get to this part and then they think they're done. So always make sure that you have answered the question. The next question is to find the gradient of the curve at A. Now when they speak about gradient, you're not working with, with this equation which you've manipulated anymore. You're working again with the original value. So in one of the previous sums, you already found the first derivative. So you don't have to find the first derivative again or differentiate again. You just simply use what you found earlier and to find the gradient at a, you need to substitute the x value of a, which is minus five and a half. So I substituted minus five and a half into the gradient formula, sorry. Remember, we want to find the gradient. So we don't substitute into the original, we don't want to find a y value, we want to find the gradient value at that point. So at point A, the gradient is negative 5.06. I just put in a negative 5.5 into this equation. All of the questions from 1 to 5, we kind of dealt with separately already in previous lessons. Um, but now, this is a newer question, and this is the one where our focus needs to be, is find the, co the x-coordinates of the points where the line 2y plus 3x equals to k touches the graph. So they give us a part of a straight line, and we want to find the coordinates of x where the line touches the graph. Okay? And the solution is very simple. It's not that bad. So what I did first is I have 2y plus 3x is equal to k. And I rewrote it as 2y is equal to 3x plus k minus 3x plus k. Now divide everywhere by 2 to rewrite the line which they are referring to in standard form. So this is now y is equal to mx plus c. So I know that the c value that I want to calculate is uh, the y-intercept. Then I also use this part of the line as the gradient. Okay, I hope you are still following. So I manipulated this equation to find the gradient that I need. Now what I know about gradient, it is the first derivative of the equation and we already differentiated fx and we found this expression. 
And what we want to do is find the x values where the gradient is equals to negative one and a half. All right, and that's the way I wrote it here. So this is the gradient or the formula for the gradient which we found earlier. And then um, this is the value it needs to be equal to. All right, multiplied everywhere by four okay to get rid of the, the fractions so this is basically what this lesson is doing showing you how to get rid of fractions i brought the six over then i divided everywhere by a negative three so notice the signs change and then because i can't factorize this normally what i need to do is i use the quadratic formula and don't just do this you need to find both x values so you need to substitute um, into the quadratic formula to find the values of x. If they say find the x coordinates, it doesn't mean that you need to solve y. They just want x values. And that's what we're having now, just x values. And the last question is very easy. Um, for which values of x is fx increasing? So you can see uh, here the gradient is decreasing. And after the point C, the gradient is decreasing. So it is increasing between the points C and B. And the value between these points is negative 4 and negative 1. So x must be between negative 4 and negative 1 for it to be increasing.